some more or less. Um, so we're gonna have this right here. So we didn't really need mm, a lot, but mm. still, we don't want to break it once it's in there. Exactly. I mean, you can always. What I like to do is just twist it. Yeah. And it'll kind of spool up on itself, and then if you need to pull it out, you have a little bit of extra. You know, so I always leave myself a little more than I think I'm gonna need. And go. it's nice that this Cadex camera has come with silicon insulated wires. So it's, let's make sure, yeah, say silicon insulation. Easy to strip. It's really nice. I definitely, everybody should do this. Um, the plastic wires that come with some cameras, I don't even know if anybody does that anymore. I don't really. think so. I think they all do silicon. That yeah. didn't used to be the case. It's very nice. Everybody should do silicon wires. So we have five volts mm -hmm. coming out of the board, mm -hmm. uh, and I think this, I think, I'm not really sure what's the minimum voltage on it. They almost all go down to five volts, but let's check. Five to 40. Perfect. So we should be all right with That's five. so convenient. We could also wire it to VBAT if we wanted to. It would just be a little, it may just mean running a wire across the board to the battery connector or any other spare VBAT, but probably the battery connector. Uh, yeah. Another thing I like about this iron that, you know, we've been working, it's been at 750 this whole time. The tip isn't really getting oxidized. You can really work with it at 750. If you're up yeah. in at 800, 850, then it, if you leave it too long, it will oxidize. But you don't have to really worry about that too much. There, there are some soldering, soldering irons out there with this, with an accelerometer built in, and they automatically shut off if you don't use them in a certain right. amount of time. The um, the Aouye, Aouye, I don't know how to say it. That uh, uh, Randy from SRA Solder talked about has that feature. And I go back and forth on how useful that feature is because if you have a good tip, you, you're not going to really smoke your tip, you know. But that one time I left it in the stand all night long at 800 <laughs> it would have saved me all, all right. right so we have five volts then we have um, the camera signal video mm -hmm. input and then we have um, our see. ground five volts camera and ground so that's where our camera's gonna go uh -huh. okay then we have the okay oh and then there's extra UART T3 R3 T with two UARTs broken yep. out there that's fantastic so if you did want to do something like smart port or, uh, or or smart audio, you've got spare UARTs. It's fantastic. Are you going to come in from the side like that? How would you do it? Why, where, you, where is the wire going to come out? Oh, you okay. Were I, in, know, I know what Not you with the iron. I mean with the, with the wire. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. That's probably better. There we now, go. Sometimes, sometimes some people will do the wires like he's doing here, and other people will prefer to bring the wires in this way. Um, I don't think there's really a right or a wrong way to do it. Do you do you have a preference? Or you've just always done it this way. Um, whenever I've done it like towards the inside, it feels like you have to have everything like where it needs to be because mm. it's gonna. Sometimes you have a uh, the SD card slot, mm -hmm, or you mm -hmm, have uh, maybe mm -hmm. some wires going around across. Yeah. Maybe you already have the V bat on something. Right. Um, and if it's a stack. You can actually easily get this big pile of wires all exactly. on top of each other, exactly. and the stack can get, especially if you're trying to vibration isolate your flight mm -hmm. controller, those wires all punched up in there can really get in the way. So I also I do it the way you're doing it, where it comes to the outside. Mm -hmm. The disadvantage, I think, of that side is that the wire is more able to sort of move and vibrate exactly. and get pulled on. And with tighter so. builds in the camera, I've mm -hmm. seen that sometimes you don't have as much room as you would like mm -hmm. to. So I always end up doing it the way you're doing it now, but... In principle, I feel like the other way is better. Now, I'm going to tell you another thing you can do. Hang on, hang on. So here's another thing you can do. So what you're doing right now, now you've got this, so now mm -hmm. we're going to now we're going to go to the next technique. So we got the pad and we got the wire, and the pad has a little bubble of solder on it. It's all dry. The wire's sitting on top of it, mm -hmm. right? Then you're bringing the iron down on top. Or use your hand be the iron. You're bringing the iron down on top. Now, you can see there that there's not a lot of surface contact, is there? No. Nope. The heat has to go through the little thin wire and then into the solder blob here. And when that finally gets hot enough to melt, then the whole thing goes. Mm -hmm. So and now you hold your hands like this. You be, the, you be the wire and the pad, okay? Another thing you can do is you can bring the 
instead of bringing the iron flat down on top of the wire, you can kind of come in at an angle like this. Okay. And what you'll do is you, you want to touch the wire, mm -hmm. but you touch the wire and then you get the tip of the iron into the solder on the pad. That quickly flows the solder on the pad and then the whole thing, the heat gets okay. into it much quicker. All right, let's see if I can put that into action. Mm -hmm. to come in kind of at the diagonal and touch both the solder and the wire at the same time instead of coming down flat and touching just the wire. Yep, yep, yep. Mm hmm. Now the wire isn't centered on the pad now, so you can fix that, but that, you'll get it. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. And you came in like this and you cocked it to the side, didn't mm -hmm. you? That's fine. You can also come in like this, right? Either way, which, however however your hands are and all, but okay. either way will work. Just touch Is that it and an roll outside? it. Uh, it I think feels a little so. light. But. Yeah, I would probably leave it. Okay. It's I would probably leave it. I think that's actually okay. You can see if you look, and you can't see this audience. You can see if you look at it from the side, it's kind of come up just a little. You have just the barest fillet there. It's borderline, but... Okay. You know, this, <laughs> we're, we're not building a space shuttle, so I'm happy to give us that one. There we go. All right, so next will be. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. You got it. That one also looks just. I'll go ahead and get the last one. That one also looks from here just a little. A little think dry. It feels like I have a little less solder than this one. Yeah. Ones. So when you tinned it, you didn't put quite as much solder on there. Exactly. Yeah. Um, I think these will be okay, but I agree that that's, that's less than I would like. That one looks pretty good for me. There we go. The only thing I notice about this one is that it is, a little. it's sticking out a little. <laughs> so let's just make sure that it's not touching anything. And that'll probably, be, yeah, it's not. It's not touching anything. That one has the right amount of solder. That cam one is a little dry. And especially so I do think the cam one deserves fixing what I don't like about the camera one is I can really see the wire sitting up mm -hmm. on top of the solder so it's not it's got there's a thing they call it, mm -hmm. go ahead. I think like when I was holding it like instead of like having it in place mm -hmm. my hand just like twisted yeah. and I brought it up I, there's a thing they call a fillet which is the little um, you know, on a bathtub and they caulk it. You got the little sort yeah, of yeah. curved thing of yeah, caulk. Yeah. I don't know. They call it the fillet of solder, and it's the way the solder flows into the joint. So if you have a right angle joint, the fillet will kind of be like that. And if you've got the wire on top of the pad, you want to see a little fillet of solder up against the edge of the wire. And okay. we, we don't see that here. The wire is sitting right on top of the solder. Okay, I know what you mean. We don't want that. That's no one like yeah. smooth. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then we could also have just a whole little blob of solder, like completely enclosing the wire. That's fine too. Mm -hmm. But here we don't even have anything like that. So okay. I, would, I would redo that. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna I'm go, go ahead. I'm gonna do it. You got it. Let me go. Do you have an XT thirties? No. Okay. Do you? Yeah. Oh, good. Okay. So this touched, is going to be it up a tiny bit. All right. Thank you. So this is something that I wouldn't like know how to tackle it at first. Cuz I'm used to the the XC6 is being like a little well you can kind of like set the wire in there. I think this one is made for I think I've had an XT60 that was like this. I think this is made for direct soldering to the board. Are mm -hmm. they all like this? I believe so. Oh. Well, all right. Well, I'll give it a go. <laughs> I'll give it a go. So that's this what is I, our that's what this I'm is our XT30. I've never soldered one of these before, but they just got these little pins. Um, normally, the XT60 will have cups, but we'll give it a go. Where's that? Here we go. And I'm just gonna here hold that for me, please. Are we are just, we are we doing the right one? I don't know. Are we? What's this one? Is this one for the battery? Yeah, those are the ones oh, for the battery. Well, that would be that would be silly, wouldn't it? Let's throw that away. Here, hold that, please. Mm, 
which is plus and which is minus. This is minus, this is plus. I'm just going to hold them together and I mean, it doesn't feel like the right way to do it. Usually an end-to-end -end joint, a butt joint like that, is really not very strong. And But I don't, I'm not sure I can That's think of a better way to do it. That needs to change. I mean, I'm sure that I'm doing this wrong, but I'm going to do it the only way I can think of how. And then we'll go, you know, people in the comments will tell me the right way. <laughs> Maybe they have tips about how to go with this one. No, this is not the tutorial part. <laughs> so I'm just going to hold them together and heat both sides until I see the solder flow. And there we go. So I heated the left side until I saw the solder start to flow and then I moved the iron over to the wire <laughs> so that the heat would, heat would pull the solder and then it okay. just went like that and I mean that's probably okay. I don't know if that's the right way to do it, but there you we'll go. try to be gentle with it. Right, maybe it's the right way to do it. It'll probably be fine. You think it would take more, it'd be faster for two people to build a quad, but it's not. <laughs> <laughs> not when one of them's me, and I'm talking the whole way through, right? <laughs> there was a guy who's he was um, he was mad that I didn't review the F four hundred five. Um, in flight, and I didn't review the video, I didn't test the video transmitter on it. And he said, you know, how long does it take to just install a flight controller in your quad and go fly it? And I was like, you have no idea <laughs> how long it takes me to do that. It will take me two weeks to get a copter in the air, just because I got so much other junk I gotta do in the meantime. I don't know what kind of solder this is. It smells different than the other. I yeah, suppose it does. if I'm smelling it, then I probably am getting cancer, but it smells different. It has a different smell. Clean core. Mm, might be better. Maybe it's better for you. Maybe it's good for you. Gives you superpowers. <laughs> I always try and people say I should have a fume extractor or a fan or something and they're right I should but I don't and a problem I, you know fan blowing in the background while I'm recording wouldn't be the best so I always try and just hold my breath I like I'll breathe in and then I'll solder and I'll kind of breathe out while I'm soldering so I'm not accidentally breathing it in I'm sure that doesn't really work I'm sure <laughs> I'm like, what are you gonna do you can get a fan I guess really is what you ought to do but. Video transmitter is done. For this kind of thing, it can be difficult to get enough solder on the pads to really make it work. So, but having a little bit of extra solder on the wire can help. You can kind of watch the wire begin the solder yeah. on the wire begin to melt as the heat is applied. You can hear it. Mm -hmm. I wish we could record it. We well, might just be. Sorry. So there <laughs> we go. That's our that's our electronics, isn't it? Yeah. So now, so now all we have to do is just finish, you know, assembling the thing. Let's uh, let's get it put together. All right. So it's actually pretty simple to assemble it, because um. We would put like each of the and they just slot on the side there. Yeah. Have to be a little mm -hmm. bit careful, but mm -hmm. let's put that to the side mm -hmm. now. And it's pretty easy because it only uses this stand up. Mm-hmm. 
So we'll need a M3 hex then. Yeah. Right there. Um. I can hold it if you want to start to get the standoffs in. I was probably just going to do one half. Oh. Put it in. Makes a little more sense, doesn't it? <laughs> I'm learning, Joshua. <laughs> <laughs> and these are plastic standoffs. Mm -hmm. uh, they don't feel like nylon. I mean, they're very light. Mm -hmm. They're not metal. Nope. Yeah. I mean, it may not be nylon. I mean, nylon is a little bit of a soft plastic. Those feel pretty, yeah, pretty hard. I don't know what it might be. It's really the frame is really reminding me of the uh, flynosaurus frames. Mm -hmm. The um, what was the one I built? I don't remember the name. Of that. It's just uh, Cerberus. Cerberus. No. Cerberus. Uh, Kerberus. Kerberus. Cerberus. No, is that it? Maybe. Mm. That might be it. Um, but it has a similar look to it and a similar design. The uh, Flynosaurus frames, the side pieces, come in from the front and back and notch in, whereas these are going into tabs from the side. I'm not sure if one is better than the other, but on a, fr on a frame this small, I'm going to guess that it's less important because you're just it's so much lighter and it's a little bit slower. There we so go. So there's less energy involved yeah. in collisions. You feel um, the size whenever you uh, let go of the throttle. Mm -hmm. That's when it just you drops. Yeah. Yeah. Or you might not have the momentum going into a curve or into mm -hmm. a turn. Mm -hmm. But it's it's interesting because it makes you power through them. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yep. It's almost like how by blades might feel a little bit. Mm -hmm. A little bit slidey. Mm hmm. Yeah. Do we need to put the camera in before we tighten those standoffs down? Um, I believe there right is in? enough space okay. for the camera. Okay. Let's test that real quick. Sure. So we will have this. Perfect. Oh, yeah, perfect. It's not. I'll get those out for you. You don't even have to. Um, I'm pretty sure we won't even need to use the. Uh, yeah, the that? bracket. Yeah, the bracket. Yeah, no. It seems like it might be made just for it. Is this how you would do it, or you would put the washer? No, it doesn't I'd make sense. the some. washer. Sometimes I just use the screws, but those are smaller screws. Always put your camera in right side up. <laughs> it's pretty interesting the way they, like, they give you a, a line, so you could probably uh -huh. move it forward Front or backward. Back, yeah, that's, that, that's that's good for a micro because you never know, like, mm -hmm. like we said before, like where the wires might end up and how much space you're gonna have. How much left or right do you have there? Is it? Is it? Do you need the cradle? I mean, you do I need the cradle? Yes. Yeah. Let's go ahead. That's it. So it's made for like a full size. Yeah, you could fit a full like size a, camera. I think we have. If you're a, where's the? I don't see the cradle. Does it come with a cradle? I don't think you could. No. No, it won't fit. No, it's not for a full size. But it definitely will not, that's not good. You know what, let's do, oh, no, that's. What are we doing? Here's the cradle. Oh, you found it. Ah, yeah. It's just over there. Okay, great. <laughs> but the cradle is going to take it up to full size. Um, see if the cradle will fit. Let's see. I'll put the cradle in here. See if oh, it'll yeah. fit. I think that just makes it full size. Hmm. What the hell? A little bit of a mystery here. A little bit of a mystery, yeah. It won't take the full size camera, but that is too loose. It's even more confusing because it's using a. I think. Mm. This one's using a micro. I think it's made for like a 3D printed mount on a mic. I think you need like a 3D printed mount or something. I'm not sure that you can get a mini on this frame, not without some kind of a spacer. I think maybe it's intended for a micro. How's it mounted, though? Oh, well, with a 3D printed thing. No, that one doesn't. Like, that's just the bracket. Oh. I'm seeing, like, a... There's some kind of a bracket for a micro. Let's, um, but let's go ahead and let's finish it up, because we're, we're just about done. Yeah. So, so... 
we've we've basically got it finished. Um, we've discovered some quirk of this frame that we can't figure out. Mm -hmm. It was probably us being dumb, but the, <laughs> the the mini it's supposed to take a mini, but the mini has too much slack in here to fit, and and it won't take a full size camera at all. And there's nothing we can't really figure out how to make that work. So. Um, probably overlooked something. All the pictures mm -hmm. on the website have a, a micro. A micro a micro yeah. camera. So I'm sure with a 3D printer you can rig something up. It yeah, just needs we'll a little probably. bit of a, a spacer or something to hold it there. But anyway, we've basically got it all soldered up. Um, the uh, Really looking forward to seeing how the Zeus treats you. Mm -hmm. well, I'll check in with you. But uh, that is the HDLRC Zeus uh, 15 amp 4-in-1 four, four ESC and F4 flight controller in one. See, we got it going here. Um, well, it's all wired up anyway. It's not exactly going yet. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, you can just... Where's the rest of it, right? <laughs> where's the rest of the build? Yeah. You know, there's there's nothing to it once you've got that. Super um, clean. Yeah. So, all right. Well, Xavier, thank you for coming and helping me thank you. with this. Um You'll clean, we'll give me some pictures of this mm -hmm. when, once it's all finally cleaned up. And once you figure out how to mount this freaking camera. <laughs> um, thank you guys for watching. That's going to do it for this video. Happy flying. Okay. All right. All right, man. That was great. Excellent. Excellent. <laughs>